It's been an exciting day today. A box I've been waiting for has arrived. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Many years ago when I was a student I used to do quite a lot of recording work and I was very lucky to work in venues all over the UK, uh, many splendid places including Westminster Abbey, the Wren Chapel in London, Marlborough College um, and also up in the north of England as well. Had some um, great fun recording choirs, orchestras etc in those venues and one of the things I was really proud of was I had uh, in my collection uh, a Neumann U87i microphone. Uh, it was second hand um, but it was really special and um, unfortunately after I left university and uh, needed a bit of cash I put it up for sale. Um, something I've regretted ever since and now I've got back into um, making films and then recording for blogging etc. I thought the time has come to uh, make amends and uh, unfortunately those microphones and even on the second hand market are a bit out of my range um, so I've gone for what I think is probably the next best thing and um, quite interesting too. I've gone for a, a Rode NTK uh, microphone um, and as some of you might know this has um, valve electronics in it which is slightly different from the transistors in the Neumann. So I really can't wait to get it out and see what it sounds like. So it comes in a rather massive box and this is unusual, even the uh, the Neumann came in a little small box and uh, the AKG mics came in quite nice little um, cases. Um, this is much, much bigger, but there's a good reason for that um, because as we look inside, um, this is a brand new one, so it's all still wrapped up. Um, the main body of the microphone's there and we'll get that in a minute and some of the cabling. Um, it's got a gap here for the shock mount because um, there is a shock mount available and I'll show you that a bit later on. Uh, but this box over here that we haven't yet opened up um, is the power supply because of course being a valve uh, condenser microphone it needs quite special power to it. Um, not just the usual three pin phantom powering um, but there'll actually be uh, a cable which has um, rather more pins on it to um, feed uh, the microphone as well as get the audio signal from it. Um, probably need to take a close-up of it but uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins on um, this XLR um, which is quite different from what you'd normally work with with condenser microphones that have the, um, the normal three pin XLR. So what I'll do in a minute is we'll get it all out and have a closer look at the microphone and uh, have a look inside it as well I think, if I can get the case off we'll have a look and see um, the single valve that sits in the centre of it. So let's have a look at what this option comes with. Um, as you might see we mentioned the shock mount is, is missing and you can buy a kit, um, the SM6 kit that goes with it which has the shock mount and the um, pop shield etc and I'll get that out later on um, because I wanted that to hold the mic on the uh, boom stand I'm going to use. Um, so what comes in the box, of course, is a, is a gentle reminder of the amount of money I've spent on this. So we'll put that to one side. Um, power cable, which you need for the, I suppose, what you could call the phantom powering unit, but it's also the valve powering uh, unit. Um, the cable that goes between the microphone and uh, the power unit with its um, slightly unusual multiple pin arrangement. So um, a, a bit like the um, stereo AKG mic I had, um, this has to belong with a mic. It's sort of um, it, it, it's not a standard XLR cable. It's the one that this microphone needs to go between it and its power supply. Um, wrapped up in here, haven't pulled it out yet, is um, the standard microphone mount. Um, but I would much rather um, use um, a shock mount um, than just the plain one that the microphone sits in. Um, and the power supply, it's quite a heavy little fellow this. Um, and you can see it's got standard power on on the front um, and then at the rear you've got the usual sockets uh, for your power supply, voltage selection which is really important if you're in a different country um, and it allows you two options and then the connection to the microphone on its special XLR lead and then the standard um, audio out. So it's a mono mic of course so you've got, you've got the, uh, but you've got the standard three pins there. So I'll stick that 
down on the floor. And then of course, what I've been waiting for, um, not much good without its own power supply, is the microphone itself. Um, remarkably heavy this actually, it's, I, I, it strikes me as being heavier than the, um, uh, the Neumann U87. Um, it's got this sort of goldy silver dot on the front um, and that allows you to sort of appreciate which side you want to treat as the, uh, the front of the microphone. Um, and then a really beautifully made and solid body. Um, so a little bit later we'll look at putting it into its shock mount um, and we'll also have um, a look inside. Um, there's a couple of other bits, and I'll just rest that on there gently. There's a couple of other bits that come in the case. Um, as you might expect, um, structure manual, which tells you a bit about it, and um, they're guaranteed for 10 years, which is, which is good news. I'm not quite sure quite what could go wrong. Um, and I think you have to be a bit careful if you change the valve in it. There's a lot of talk about actually changing the uh, thermionic valve that's in there, or the tube, the Americans would call it. And um, changing that, um, I guess, would void your warranty. You're, you're um, playing with the electronics. Um, but we'll have a look at which one's in there at some stage. So I've laid out everything in the option that I bought. Um, and it's really nice to see that uh, they use um, very, very sensible part numbers. Um, NTK PS, the power supply, PL100, the um, mains lead, which is a, a normal sort of kettle type mains lead. Um, NTKC, obviously the cable that's special for the microphone um, with its 7-pin um, XLRs. RC2, uh, rugged case, um, which it all came in. The NTK speaks for itself. RM2, uh, ring mount, and M2, the little standard thread adapter. And um, the uh, warranty for 10 years. And the uh, microphone manual, which we'll talk a little bit about in a minute. So let's have a brief look at the manual. Um, it doesn't tell you a great deal about the microphone actually, uh, just a little bit of setting up information. And uh, one of the things it has in it is um, the uh, polar plot of the microphone, uh, cardioid shape as you'd expect, and a graph of the frequency response. Um, though it's worth pointing out that the frequency response is a generic one. It's um, For those of you who are used to AKG mics, um, it's not a frequency response that's been drawn specifically for this microphone, uh, but it just gives a general impression of what is expected of the NTK. Um, the rest of it is really just storage information. So um, not a great deal to learn from the manual, but um, it was interesting just to look at the um, both the cardioid uh, plot um, to see how well it actually responds and um, just have a quick look at how flat the frequency response looked. So if you're blogging, you probably want a decent shock mount and pop shield. So instead of using um, the normal ring mount, I bought myself the SM6, which is the two combined. And uh, we'll get that out of the box now and have a look at it. So here it is out of the case. It's really beautifully made. It's um, quite a heavy item, this. Um, the shock mount and the pop shield. Um, the nice thing about it is that it's um, adjustable in all directions so you can adjust the uh, pop shield however you like and of course the mount. Give some thought to the stand you're going to put this on because the microphone is going to be an added weight and I think you're going to be well over a kilo by the time you've got these two together. The other thing that's really important um, that you take into account is this doesn't fit into the hard case that you saw earlier um, this is a, the shock mount 6 SM6 is much bigger. The uh, SM2 is the one that fits in that center hole in the case we saw earlier. So let's have a look inside. We need to take it apart first. Um, the way to do that is on the end, there's this large um, knurled nut that comes off um, on a rather nicely engineered thread. So we'll take that off and put it to one side. And then you have to unscrew um, the main body of the microphone and that comes away. There's quite a lot of weight in that and be very careful how you slide it off. And then that exposes the um, the main electronics and uh, what you can see is obviously some capacitors and the leads going up into the um, XLR at the bottom and, and the uh, capsule of the microphone at the top and then you can see the main valve that sits there. Um, it's fitted at the moment uh, with a, a 6922EH, which is the electroharmonics um, Russian valve. 
Um, as I said earlier, quite a lot of talk about replacing this um, with an ECC88 or similar um, E being 6.3 volts for the heater um, and CC being a triode and a, and a triode, the 88 just referring to the type of base that it has. Um, I haven't actually tried that um, and I sort of feel compelled to sort of leave it as it is. Um, but I'm just making the point just how easy it is to take the case off and how easy it would be um, to change that um, triode valve if you wish to. So let's look again the microphone on its stand. Um, you'll now see the reason for this large knurled nut on the uh, bottom of the microphone because this needs to be taken off if you're going to put it on the ring mount. Um, and it's a bit of a fiddle uh, with the microphone being so heavy but uh, if you remember the ring mount um, slides on depending on which way round you want to put the microphone on the stand of course uh, and you find yourself holding it a bit like that and then screwing the nut on and trying to line up the two and then you've got the microphone um, on its actual microphone clip um, just remember you'll need a pretty beefy stand to hold this because it is jolly heavy um, and uh, if it's not well supported it's just going to drop down um, but of course if you're going to use um, the SM6 that's the shock mount um, to use the shock mount um, you not only undo the nut on the bottom uh, but you actually take this and completely leave it off um, and uh, the shock mount itself um, has a nut um, rotating part on the bottom so um, remembering to take it off the microphone I found this quite tricky uh, first time round um, because it was a sort of bit of a fiddle with my hands but I actually find it's easier to uh, put the microphone in from underneath and um, line it all up and then when you've got it lined up um, rotate the nut underneath the SM6 and you get it to grip and it actually turns rather a long way you kind of turn and turn and turn and turn but we'll get there in a minute I guess most people once they've put it on here will be leaving it on there for good so it's on and of course the only other thing to check is is that silver spot facing in the forwards direction uh, because this microphone is a cardioid um, pattern so obviously it needs to be facing towards you when you're speaking um, that lot is jolly heavy um, and uh, a normal boom stand that you might pull over for um, blogging or what have you is just not going to hold it unless it's stiff enough um, you've not only got about a kilo's worth of kit here um, but you've also got an incredible moment quite a lot of leverage as well um, so I would think long and hard about how you're going to mount this um, and you know get yourself a pretty beefy stand because it's not a light microphone so that's the Rode NTK valve microphone if you're thinking of buying one of these I hope that answered some of your questions and you found the video useful